colleagues. This is the third straight day that we have failed to achieve a quorum on the floor of the Oregon State Senate. The voters who sent us here each day expect us to show up for work, debate vigorously, to get things done for the people of Oregon. But it is abundantly clear that there is a concerted effort to undermine the will of the people and bring the legislature to a halt in violation of the Constitution of the State of Oregon and the voters who put their sacred trust in our service. It is also clear that this is an effort to stop this chamber from holding a debate on House Bill 2002, the Reproductive Health and Access to Care Bill. This week, we have heard many new objections from members on this floor regarding the process and whether it is legal and constitutional for us to have a second and third reading on House Bill 2002. 24 hours ago, a Marion County District Court judge weighed in. He denied Oregon Right to Life's request to halt the legislature's reproductive health care bill. We have a constitutional right and a duty as legislators to debate that bill. Last fall, Oregonians spoke loud and clear, passing Measure 113 with 60% of the vote statewide. It passed in every single state Senate district. This is now codified in Section 15, Article 4 of the Oregon Constitution. And it's simple. Voters expect us to live by the same rules they do. If you have a job, you show up to work. Several members have asked for an explanation regarding excused absences contained in Senate Rule 3.10. So here it is. We have two members who have been granted sustained medical leave prior to the orchestrated obstruction we have seen this week. And at this point, unless it is for an extraordinary circumstance, no member, Democrat or Republican, will be granted an excused absence from this floor until we achieve a quorum to conduct the affairs of state. The voters this fall gave everyone nine days to be gone for any reason, outside business, family, a dentist, or a doctor's visit to attend a service, and even to protest the actions of the work that we do. And also, let's be clear, we are not sending process servers and we're not sending the state police. But we have a constitutional obligation to adjourn this session after 160 days, which is Sunday, June 25th at midnight. And in order to make sure we complete our work on or before that deadline, we will be holding floor sessions every single day, if we have to, including weekends. Many of our constituents have to work sometimes two or three jobs, seven days a week. I just want to say today at 5 p.m., you've all made it to the second chamber work session posting deadline. You have been working your tails off. And a lot of the public doesn't know that we have co-sponsored and supported and voted on so much bipartisan legislation this session. Let's lean into that. We agree. We agree on funding our schools, on fixing our roads, on cleaning up our water, on investing in semiconductors and jobs and housing and health care for our seniors and protecting our children and honoring our military. To every single one of you, I respect your right to have a different opinion and for us to disagree. But disagree here, on the people's floor, out in the open, where the people of Oregon can see where we stand and they can participate in the process. At the beginning of the session, I said three things. My door is always open, good ideas come from everywhere, and there is always room for kindness. For any member of the Senate who would like to talk about the session or legislation or budgets or just to chat, I can be here at the Capitol every single day. I will clear my calendar for any of you. If you want to walk in Bush Park, if you want to grab lunch at Willamette, or you just want to get a cup of coffee and a donut and chat, 
Every member of you has my cell phone number, and I will always answer your call. I also welcome your ideas. I honor the work you do and the communities that you serve across Oregon. 